In this demo, I'm going to show you flow through constrictions. Specifically, we're going to have a rectangular channel and there is going to be a bridge foot or bridge pier um, to be constructed in this channel. If you go upstream of the constriction, the width of the channel is b little b and the depth is equal to y sub 1. If you are at constriction when the bridge pier is there, then uh, that bridge pier is going to constrict the flow around it, right? So the width of the flow is going to reduce and depth of water over there is going to change as well. And we are going to call that depth Y sub 2. So I have set up this, uh, these tables, the system of tables and a graph which gives you specific energy versus flow depth to show you how we can figure out how depth of water at Y2 changes based on Y1 and also width of the bridge pier or W over here, little w. So I'm going to assume some flow rates and width for the channel to be able to um, graph specific energy versus uh, flow depth. Going to consider the flow or capital Q of 1.1 cubic meters per second. The width of the channel, or B, I'm going to consider 1.3, and Q, or flow rate per uh, unit width, is going to be capital Q divided by B. Perfect. So, um, in order to be able to graph this for you, flow depth versus specific energy, I need to have a set of depths to be able to calculate a set of E. So I'm going to start from a small depth with the increments of 0 0.1 and go all the way up to 1.5 meters. Now flow area is going to be depth of flow times width of the channel which is 1.3 meters so I'm going to press F4 to fix that cell and then drag it down. All right, next I need to calculate specific energy. The equation for specific energy is over here. I'm going to use, um, you can use either of one. I'm going to use the second version of it because it has capital Q and I already have the value of capital Q. So um, I'm gonna write this equation and then resume the video. All right, you can see the equation that I have written over there. I am going to drag this cell down to calculate a specific energy for all other uh, flow depths as well, y sub 1s. You can see that this curve, the black curve, represents uh, flow depth uh, versus specific energy for this upstream of constriction situation. Now I'm going to do the same thing for downstream or at constriction situation as well. So um, flow rate or capital Q is not going to change. It's the same channel. B prime is the corrected um, width of the flow area. Just to show you what I mean. So when you have a bridge pier, the flow area is going to be restricted or constricted to only this portion and this portion. So the corrected B or B prime is going to be capital B minus W, which is width of the bridge foot or bridge pier. Let's assume a number for width of the bridge. I'm going to assume 0 0.3. And then based on this, B prime will be little b, 1.3 minus little w, 0 0.3, which is equal to 1 meter over here. So again, little q, capital Q divided by B. All right, what I'm going to do is, again, assume some Y sub 2s to be able to graph flow depth versus specific energy. I'm going to use the same number, so I will copy that and paste it over here. Area is going to be corrected based on B prime, so Y sub 2 times B prime, press F4 to fix it, and then drag it down. And then specific energy 
will be calculated based on y sub 2 and based on q. So I'm going to calculate that and resume the video. All right, the equation is written over there. Now I need to drag this down and you will see that this over here, that green curve represents uh, flow depth versus specific energy at constriction scenario. All right, I'm going to change the minimum and maximum of x axis and y axis to be able to see the changes a little bit better. So specifically, I'm going to double click over here and change the minimum of x axis to 0 0.5 just for the purpose of seeing things a little bit better and then double click on my y axis and change the minimum and maximum from to 0 to 1 maybe. And this should give us a better uh, contrast between the two. All right, now we are going to figure out how y2 and y1 is, are related based on this flow depth and specific energy. First of all, let me tell you that when we are at this point, this point is represents the minimum specific energy for uh, the condition when we are upstream of constriction, or E, E minimum. This point corresponds to a depth, and you already know that we call depth what we call this depth y sub c. Any depth that is higher than y sub c is going to generate subcritical flow, and any depth that is lower than y sub c is going to generate supercritical flow. Again, we are going to assume that y1 right now is going to be subcritical. So the condition of the flow is subcritical. And subcritical means that y1 is larger than yc. Let's consider a number for y1. Let's see, let's say that y1 is 0 0.9. What would be the energy of water at that y? It would be right over here. And this, if I go down, I would be able to find the energy of that point, specific energy. I'm going to call it E. Now, specific energy is a summation of depth plus velocity hat. In other words, it doesn't matter which section I am, whether I am upstream of constriction or at constriction. Specific energy is not going to change because when I move through the channel, y or flow depth and velocity are going to change and because they both change specific energy is going to be constant that energy is not going to change that means that if i want to find y2 i just need to move from the black curve to the green curve on that specific energy that i have found in other words let's use the blue color so right now I know that y1 is this blue point. If I go down along the line that I have sketched, this point represents y2. And y2 is the depth at constriction. Great, so this is how we find y2. And notice that y2 is less than y1. So, and y1 was in subcritical condition, right? That's why when you have subcritical condition, y2 is going to be less than y1 and water profile, water surface profile is going to go down. What if we have supercritical condition? Let's change the color over here to, to red. Um, I'm going to say that the flow is supercritical right now. So y is going to be less than y sub c. And I'm going to say that this new y1 is 0 0.2. So if I find a corresponding value of e for this, 
and I know that E is going to be the same for the black curve or for the green curve. So if this was Y1, I just need to go up along this line to find Y2 over here. Now, Y1 was in super critical condition. And whenever you are in super critical condition, as I showed you in the slides, Y2 would be higher than Y1. This is the reason that flow uh, acts or why depth of water acts differently when you have subcritical or supercritical condition. Now, for the sake of simplicity, we are going to consider that Y1 is subcritical. In other words, Y sub 1 is larger than critical flow depth or Y sub C. So I'm going to remove the supercritical lines to make my graph a little bit cleaner. The question that I have answered so far is how Y1 and Y2 are related and how we can show them on specific energy curve. The second question that I want to ask is how do we know that what is the maximum value of little w or width of the pier that doesn't change the depth upstream of constriction or Y1? In other words, what is the maximum w that keeps the same Y1? Let's take a look at it. I'm, right now, the value of W is 0 0.3. Let's see what happens if I increase this to 0 0.4. So when I increase that to 0 0.4, that obviously is going to impact the green curve because the green curve represents at constriction uh, specific energy versus depth, right? So when I increase this to 0 0.4, take a look at the green curve and let me know how it changes. 0 0.4, press enter, the green curve moves to the right. Let's change it to 0 0.5. It again moves to the right. Now, you can clearly see that right now this Y2 is not correct because as I change little w, the green curve moved. So. When you increase the width of the pier or the bridge foot, then Y2 goes down. Let me show you how. So Y2 is going to go down over here. And now the Y2 that corresponds to the new bridge, new uh, bridge pier width is over here. I can increase this a little bit more even. I can increase it to 0 0.55 and it would be it would be change y2 will change again um, let's increase it to 0 0.6 or something larger let's do 0 0.8 all right now that we have done 0 0.8 the line that we are going to sketch which eventually goes to our specific energy is not going to touch this green curve that we have at all. And this is physically impossible, right? So I need to find the maximum of W, little w, in a way that it touches this blue line that I'm sketching right over here, this one, right? So let's see how I can do that. If I reduce W to 0 0.75, comes back a little bit, but still not enough. 0 0.7 comes back, still not enough. How about 0 0.65, a little bit more. 0 0.6, there we go. So right now I can show you that right at this point, Right at this point, it touches the green um, the green line that represents specific energy at 
constriction. So this point, we already know that this point represents what? Y2, which is equal to Y sub C or critical depth when we are at constriction cross-sectional area. What I want you to understand is when Y2 is equal to YC, that the value of W that we get is the largest value of W that does not change the condition of the flow upstream. In other words, if I increase the value of W more than 0 0.6 in this example, the water is going to choke and it's going to back up and the value of y sub 1 will be changed, will increase to compensate for the large value of w.